Welcome to another episode of Rec Talk The Roundtable. This is what version three now, isn't it, of the Roundtable as a Christmas special. Hold on a minute. We are, we're, are we even live yet? Yeah. Are we? <laughs> Did you not hear it? Leave it. Oh. This was just like, proof that it was going to yeah. be live. Do you know, like, yeah. because it oh, no, now we're live. Yeah. There we are. We're, <laughs> we're, there we are. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, going back to, oh, we're yeah. at a Christmas special, which is obviously why Apologies. we've got uh, Christmas jumpers on. Barry, thanks for uh, the Christmas outfit. Yeah. Not even Christmas socks, though. <laughs> no, Christmas nothing. From the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Put that. We should put Angela's gift next to uh, next to Barry, shouldn't we? Yeah. It's, I'm not saying it needs to be over there, but yeah. <laughs> well, look, by, by way of intros, um, let's let's kind of kind of <coughs> get ourselves introduced. So Angela, if we start from your side, and then we'll kind of work our way around. Absolutely, I'll keep it very brief. I'm Angela Hill, and I recruit recruiters. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> what a job. <laughs> Chester Booth, I'm supplying to knitting. Sean, Louise Archer. Uh, we teach contingent recruiters how to move to retained. Terry Wolfendale, Pulse Outsource. We support recruitment agencies with funding and back office services. I'm Rebecca Pay. I write kick ass CVs for senior leaders. And ice creams. Uh, yeah, and I like eating them. Who doesn't? And I'm Barry Cullen, I'm a solicitor to the recruitment industry. Boo. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what's your nickname, Barry? Backdoor. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody so knows that guy. Right. Yeah. 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 You may remember me as Backdoor <laughs> Barry. Yeah. 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 It's my bit done. I'm yeah. <laughs> well, look, we wanted to kind of, uh, as it's towards the back end of the year, kind of cap off um, what the the market has been like over the last year, kind of across different areas within recruitment, but then also kind of look at what what we think is going to happen moving forward into into the new year. So. I think, Chess, if we, we start with you, I mean, look, the, the recruitment supply chain is going crazy at the minute, isn't it, with the volume of suppliers going into the recruitment world, specifically within the tech market as well now, right? Absolutely. So um, we've seen an exponential growth with our clients who are seeking new new tech, tech stack. So that's um, CRM ATS. But one of the drivers that we're seeing more, more that's required is automation and AI. We've seen that companies are not just buying tech to do recruitment, they want it more automated, as in my day, which was paper and scripts, <laughs> automate. And then they're supporting that with some AI. So I want to talk a little bit about that later on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I had um, enough tech suppliers out there for CRMs or ATS, come to me, please. I could do with some more. So that's what I'm seeing in the market. Why, why do we think that is then? I mean, obviously, Terry, you're supplying into, into the recruitment world and, and, and Barry, so, so are you. But why, why do we think there's, there's been such an increase in, in people wanting to supply into the recruitment world? Um, it's a massive market, it's first and foremost. 40, yeah, 48 yeah. billion pounds. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot So cash, do, basically. <laughs> <laughs> massive market, lots of opportunity. It's a market that it's an industry that's always always kind of changing always kind of moving with the times i think automation ai the kind of embracing of that encapsulates that that sort of move um, and, you know and what makes the what makes it quite a progressive quite an exciting industry to be a part of so i think it will always kind of attract suppliers mm -hmm. attract investment attract growth hmm? barry what about your industry <coughs> then you, like automation and ai is that something that you think can be embraced within the law, like the legal, legal sector. Services specifically, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, definitely. Um, it, we call it a first draft generator, so you wouldn't mm -hmm. want to rely on it, mm. you know, because it's not that level of quality. We we see we've seen quite a few cases coming in already where recruiters have been using, um, you know, some sort of AI uh, system, ChatGPT or whatever, to um, to draft their terms of business. Yeah, yeah. which is glorious for me as a litigator because it means it always goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> from, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's funny you, you see because it doesn't quite grasp. You know, it doesn't have general intelligence, right? It's, it's language modelling, so it doesn't know what whether what it's done is good or not. Mm -hmm. from, a, from, a, from a logical human sense um, and we've seen like bits of German law English law and French law all in <laughs> one set of terms yeah. business yeah. Uh, <laughs> the recruiters just go oh that must be alright that sounds good yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. You know, uh, and as a result we get work out of it that's yeah. how the rec that, that's why recruitment is at forty eight billion because we just like dive in both feet first see what <laughs> see what happens yeah. fuck it yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. which is so, also very attractive to suppliers to the recruitment yeah. industry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I got this sure, great new shiny. Quite, quite good people to sell to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like here, yeah, there's like a shiny silver thing here, Magpie. Do you want it? Yeah, you can. <laughs> So, okay, I mean, look, as, as kind of suppliers into the recruitment world, then obviously that is a great time to be in the recruitment market. But how about us as recruiters then? I mean, Louise, is there, is there, a, is there a, um, a change in the way that people are recruiting now? Do you think they're embracing it more? Or is it a case of, uh, have, have we become inherently lazy, which is why we're looking at the AI tools and all that sort of stuff? Well, that's a good question. Um, I do have a few I mean, yeah. <laughs> have you managed? Yeah. I, for me, somebody asked me yesterday, it's the same sort of thing, you know, is cold calling dead? Um, because of all the automation, all the AI and all the tech that people use for business development, I think um, a lot of recruiters lean too heavily on tech for both business development and um, project delivery. And f I don't believe that cold calling is dead. Equally, I me don't too. believe that headhunt call is dead either. And so I see the most effective recruiters and when we're executing work ourselves is the combination of traditional methods yeah. um, and <coughs> using AI and tech um, and, and at the moment I don't see that changing anytime soon. Well it's used it as a co-pilot isn't it? I think we've, we've spoken mm. before a couple of times using kind of AI as, as a, as a co-pilot rather than a, a replacement for, mm. for recruiters yeah. but I mean going into the rec to rec world then I mean is there is there a is there a change from kind of what candidates are expecting now? Do they want this level of tech when they're going into their new firms? It's very difficult to get that <coughs> synergy and to get that balance right, I find. And that's what we're all going through at the moment. It's a learning process, isn't it? This is new to all of us within the industry. And we're just trying to get the best out of AI to remove the weaknesses within recruitment and allow the recruiters, the humans, to concentrate on their strengths. So that's what we're going <coughs> to get to eventually. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, it's it's getting that equilibrium right. Do we, do we as recruiters, though, are we, are we that way wired though? Because if you look, if you look at all of the tech that's ever existed within recruitment, like. CRMs have always been a, a, a good tool, right? But yeah. <coughs> we always just go to, let me just jump on job boards, let me just source CVs on LinkedIn, job boards, but we've got like thousands of candidates on our CRM that yeah. we could have gone to. So I feel like, is AI going to do the same sort of thing where it's like, actually, we There'll be some products. I think uh, <coughs> saying AI will, is AI going to do that is probably a bit too broad because mm -hmm. there's multiple use cases, right? Mm -hmm. So there are, and you'll back me up on this, given the world you're in. Don't get bullied into backing them up. Yeah, back me up <laughs> yeah, on no, this. No. No, no. <laughs> I swore, sorry. Um, right, so you have, you have a range of tech products that, that and we all, we all do this uh, in personal life. You'll have a range of tech products that you'll probably sign up for for a year, but you'll only use maybe for three or four months. And then the usage will drop off because it hasn't created a, it hasn't actually answered a, a, a problem or the problem that it, it resolves is really small and therefore you kind of just try and use it, it doesn't become habitual and you just stop using it. Mm. And I think sometimes CRMs fall into that. If you're all the kind of recruiter that historically never used to code up your candidates and use the CRM effectively, well, that's a big learning curve and generally what you find is you can be on top of those, those particular recruiters and they'll use it for a period of three, four months and then when they're left on their own, they'll stop doing it again. Uh, and I think there's, there's the elements of that with particular bits of AI um, and, and automation outreach and that kind of thing. But if it's a product that actually truly resolves a, a genuine issue, mm. you're probably going to embrace that and ingrain that into your business. Take a, a CV formatting tool, for example. That would well, save CV a lot of writing, time. I suppose, because like, I mean, look, when you're when you're writing CVs, a lot of what you do is based on the person that you're talking to, right? Like the information that you can extract out of that person. So, is AI able to do? effectively the uh, first draft of, of what you do yeah interesting I've been looking into this um, as a thing like to how much AI can help mm. and because I, I do use it to an extent with certain things but I think you do have to be very aware that it can't like I, I spoke to someone that knows all about AI and stuff and they were like can I set up a thing that will do a lot of what I do and you know could I be replaced by AI you know could I yeah. s like have a product that I sell or whatever and they were like well actually it's going to be quite difficult to get AI to ask the right questions and then depending on what they've said back, again, ask the right question, do you know what I mean? And like get the yeah. right information out of someone. Context, isn't because it? actually that conversation you have with someone and that kind of relationship building yeah. side of it, AI can't really do. And maybe it will mm -hmm. be able to do it better at some point, but I don't know whether it will ever really replace that 
person to person like relationship which is what obviously I build with a client mm. when I speak to them and get information it's well, not just gathering information is it it's building that relationship so they trust you enough to tell you things and actually they suddenly go oh yeah I remember I did this as well and that's why I think cold calling won't ever finish because mm. I, I think look is it going to is it inherently harder to call to cold call absolutely right mm. less people answer the phone less people put their number out there I mean landlines are, are, are all but dead now you try mm-hmm. and call a, a head office they, they just don't exist anymore so you have to find the, the mobile numbers but <coughs> I mean how many of us have, have done cold calls in the past where you've you've managed to secure a meeting or build a relationship or, or even have an existing relationship now off the back of a cold call mm-hmm. which is why I think it will never die because it's it's that, it's that that human element piece isn't it and I just don't think any kind of tech is going to be able to replace that because that's I think the recruitment industry in itself is it's people based isn't it so you can't you remove the people out of it and all of a sudden we're dealing in just kind of CV matching against job descriptions I suppose aren't we mm. yeah but it'll take it'll take it'll take the admin time wasty type work away so that recruiters can focus on the relationship mm. piece yeah and focus on the humanity piece and understanding how people work and building those relationships <coughs> so that you don't have to you can spend more time doing that rather than spend your time doing that and the CV sifting mm. and all the other bits and pieces that go yeah and that's how I'm going to use it to, yeah, <coughs> to, you know, I, I think yeah, you, you made information I get but the actual yeah. building relationship with the person you can't replace you, that you, you made the, the, the keyest point I, I see a lot of like keyest. the keyest is that is that the key thank you that feel good yeah. 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 I did look all day I have to deal with this okay yeah. 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 You put this off the point you made Can't put a foot wrong. is the most valid, right? In the you haven't looked at AI like shit. Is this going to take my job? And do I need to now start doing something else for a living? You've gone. How do I use this to make money? And that's where I think a lot of people are going wrong. Is it's not humans versus AI. That's not even no, that. That shouldn't no. be the conversation. But for some reason, that seems to be where the conversation goes drawn to all the time. Right? It's because I think it's all if you don't learn about AI and yeah, start to try to use right. it. Like Am- Amazon are investing a ton of money in prompts in terms of training people up on how to prompt AI. Yeah. Because as you said, the problem is it will do a job that you ask it to do, and it won't know whether it's done a good or bad job because well, it's not a human. And it's only good as the, it's only going to be as good as the prompts given to it. So it as any system, shit in, shit out, right? And and that's where I think we Sporting. in our industry keep getting it wrong is mm. we keep kind of either turning away from it, oh it's not gonna it's not gonna replace me or no 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 it's not it's not ready yet. It's not there to replace you. It's actually a really, really good lab assistant. You can carry on being the scientist, yeah. but you've got a lab assistant now that can perform 15, 20 times faster than the, your current setup. So use it. Use it properly, but so use it and understand it. What 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 type of roles then do we think going into 2024 and beyond are going to be under threat then because of the use of AI? Because if you think about it, if we're talking, I mean, there, there, there'll be a heavy amount of admin that gets done within the litigation world, right? Yeah. So. Are there are there people in your sector that you think are going to go, or resources? Are we thinking resources are going to go, or researchers? No, I don't think so. I think I think take take yeah. the admin piece for example. What you then have is a bunch of people who are currently bogged down with admin, mm. who will have more time on their hands to use their experience and their skills in other areas. Mm. That's the point, right? Take take it in the recruitment world. Um, the biggest gripe most candidates have is I don't get feedback. That's the issue. AI is able to give feedback without any emotional recourse. Sorry, Barry, you weren't selected for an interview for the following reasons. This is the feedback that was provided by the client. <laughs> yeah, you refused to work. Yeah, well, whatever it might be, right? <laughs> Humans have that, oh, I'm too busy. I need to get back on the phones. I need to do this. I need to do that. So candidates don't get the rejection calls. Don't get the thanks for applying, but not right now. AI can do that for you. Yeah, but sh- it's yeah. That, that's automation, and th- surely. At the minute it is. <laughs> yes. At the minute it is. <laughs> yeah. But there's no, there's, there's, we're, we're what, three months away yeah, from pick, it being a phone call instead of on, an email? Picking up on Barry's point, you know, in my world as, as a recruiter, when I was a recruiter, too much time spent on useful, waste of time admin. Mm-hmm. Get rid. Automate it all. Automate <laughs> all that <laughs> excuse yeah, crap yeah, right. stuff, right? <laughs> and use AI to drive the real sexy yeah. stuff, yeah? yeah? So, uh, uh, recruiters spend time with your clients, generating relationship, building relationship, whining and dining, taking out your clients. Yeah. Get rid of all that crap. That's yeah. that's old school. All that CV sifting, all that. Automate that, and then use AI on top. 
to yeah. bolster what you do. Recruit the word recruitment consultant. Mm. Do we understand what those means? Consultant. Mm. Consultant. Order taking. <laughs> it means you can the and and you put it talk. in the back. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't see, no, you're right. Part yeah, yeah. you talk yeah. to your That's clients, like you talk to your candidates, yeah. you build a relationship, yeah. get rid of all the paperwork bullshit and move on to building relationships. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. But I knew about Barry before. Uh, before before Barry knew about Before Barry. Because Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I had an issue and they went, backdoor Barry. I went, who the bloody hell is this guy? And his name kept on crapping up. But your reputation has come from sorting out problems, but yeah. you've built relationships with other people. That's how I got to hear about yeah. you. For, so recruiters need to engage with automation, automate the crap stuff and use it for the sexy stuff. Sorry, just to, on the back of Barry, just for me. <laughs> Please stop calling me that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that at all. No, I, I, I met a guy, met a fellow yesterday who I'd met six months before, right? And he, he found out my nickname the first time yeah, he met me. Yeah. And then six months later, he went, Oh, you deal with backdoor high disputes. That's why you're called that. I was oh, like, Jesus. Oh. What did you think? <laughs> what did you have been thinking for the last six months? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh. <laughs> no, don't even answer that. No, no, no. Right, so outside of AI and automation, though, what 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 are the trends do we see happening, kind of, in the next a year, two years, three years? Well, Terry, you're kind of speaking to recruitment business owners or, or kind of startups, aren't you? Pretty much, pretty much all the time. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, I'd say in the well, certainly the second half of this year, probably from about September onwards, in a real uptick in the number of um, startup ventures basically people feeling brave enough now yeah. to and I think in all honesty with the autumn budget the other day and kind of some of the announcements mm. from that are probably just going to boost that optimism a little yeah. bit so I think I do think as we go into next year I'm expecting the sort of first six nine months of next year to be really busy on that do you think the growth element of startups will continue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I can support uh, that as well because yeah. um well what, what i get engaged in is recruiters coming to me and saying look chester we love you to set up a business but we don't know where to start mm. so they're doing it as a side hustle to start yeah. with mm -hmm. and then they move into when they've got their bonus in <laughs> and all that coming <laughs> things up up <laughs> but they do. Really? That, and then they start their own companies and that's how it all starts yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely builds a bit of confidence as exactly. well exactly test it a little yeah, bit yeah. Build a bit of confidence with it prove the concept it. and then they move it into doing their own thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah i thought we established recruiters jump into things both feet first like well, mm -hmm. who are these mm -hmm. thoughtful <laughs> no like, 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 all sensible recruiters people like, like, what is that <laughs> these side hustle yeah. 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 what no. is that no Lou, have you seen an optic in inbound inquiries then for people wanting to move to retained yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i thought massive. you massive yeah. we just have not stopped even though like the economy has been has been tough you know the earlier part of this year Shout out we this haven't trust. yeah we haven't stopped it's been busier than ever and it's getting busier and busier and they and these are people who basically what i hear all day every day is i am so fed up of the contingent model mm. I think people can only take so much of it. Like when you first start, because I know because I what that's what I did for years and years and years and years. And when you first start, it's like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Like I can send some stuff out, and then boom, there's a lot of money, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's exciting. And then over the years, year after year after year, you start to get a bit. Oh my God, why? Why is that client not come back to me? Why yeah. have they changed their mind? Why have they not done what they said they were going to do? And then you start to get a little bit jaded by it and that's what happened to me and I think that's that happens to a lot of people mm. so we just have an overwhelming number of people coming to us saying teach us how to move to retained I wish you'd stop doing it though because retained <laughs> doesn't result in a dispute <laughs> <laughs> there's not no, enough falling out that, that's, a, that, that's an interesting touch point though because yeah. like you and I we've, we've not really done a huge amount in, in no, the retained world no. a lot of our work has always been contingent but if I mean we, we, we know of, and I won't go into detail about who, but we know of a, a business that sold three retainers to different parts of the same business, um, didn't fill any of those retainers. Oh and then when, when there was a placement that was being made, they were like, well, hang on, we've got three lots of retainers here in a different department. Like, mm. the, we're not paying that fee. Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, there was, there was exceptions that needed to be made where they were like, okay, well, that fee is going to contribute towards this retainer. And it all got really messy. So... I guess from your point of view, it's like, well, you're selling a retainer. No, it's retained on this particular engagement, but 
does that like is there is there sort of legal disputes on that can yeah, I, I bet you that's a circumstance where they haven't built a proper retained model <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 yeah they're literally... contingent recruiters who've yeah. got hey retain us on this and we'll do this yeah, yeah. yeah. but not yeah. with the the terms and the model and the commercials yeah, all exactly. working together exactly. because i think you'll you'll make this point but on retained you're not paying to hire someone you're paying for someone to go out and search for someone execute the project yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the execution right. of the search the, is, is it, the job the problem there is the misunderstanding between what what a retainer is and yeah. Yeah. most contingent recruiters think that it's just taking money up front and it isn't and barry's absolutely right it's a combination of the pro- the process that you execute the terms that you're working to the agreement that you have with the client mm-hmm. and and what you then ultimately go and do and the results that you deliver there's a lot of misconceptions <coughs> it's take money up front and then commit to fill and that's just disaster yes so just disaster so for those for those then that don't kind of know about the the uh, retain model then yeah. so what what what's what's the benefit for the client and how do they how do they pitch that to the client in in a way that's not give me the money up front before I start recruiting or well, I'm giving away too much of your course at this point. It, it, it wasn't me this time. It wasn't me this time. Oh, fuck yeah. Well, there's a great episode that we did on Rexport. <laughs> you can go back and watch it. No, no, I want to answer it. I just want to make sure that it's the question. That I, I've understood the question that you've asked. Why would a client buy it? That's what you're asking me, basically. Mm. Well, the answer is that if they're having a good time with a contingent model, then they shouldn't. So if if the methods that they're using right now are working for them, if they're getting what they want, when they want it, and it's an enjoyable process, I say, Mm -hmm. carry on doing what you're doing because it's fucking difficult. Excuse, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We've got money in it. We've got money in it. I know, right? (laughs) My my concern, we we literally just come out of a ban from Google because of the swearing. So I'm really trying to actively roll it in now. It's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Thanks, Louise. You're going to get kicked off. I'm Google so again sorry. now. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. No, no, no. Good. No, but you're you you're, you're okay, right. You're I absolutely will not right. Swear yeah. again. Apologies. Please Google. Oh, don't don't yeah, not many people are getting the results that they want when they want it, and they're not necessarily having a good time doing it. And that that's pro- provokes the diagnostic, which is why what's going wrong? What what is it? Quality? Is it quantity? Is it effort from recruiters? Is it candidates declining offers? What what actually is the problem? Yeah. And diagnosing whether a retained solution is the right solution to apply, and whether a different solution is necessary. And if it is, because whatever they're using at the moment, <coughs> excuse me, isn't working then what is the right solution to put in place that's going to solve that problem? Because yeah. usually the things that are going wrong are it's a, maybe it's a difficult or awkward position, maybe it's in an awkward location, maybe it's a niche skill set. And when you're working on a contingent basis, everybody knows you have to grade, what you, you have to work closest to the fee, right? Yeah. You have to work on the positions that are most likely to yield uh, revenue, Mm -hmm. which means the harder ones go to the bottom bottom, of the list and Mm -hmm. everyone starts to kind of move away from them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's just the problem in itself. Sometimes it's because it's contingent and no one can spend the time on it. No one's actually headhunting it properly because it's too risky, right? It's it's difficult to fill. And the client might just go, oh, actually, sorry, decided to do this. You can't spend a load of time on a position Mm -hmm. like that. So a lot of the time you can put in place a process that will solve the problem that the client is facing. One of the biggest misconceptions is, though, is that you, when you take that, that, that financial commitment that you have to then commit to fill it, and this is one of the misconceptions um, of recruiters, and actually you can't, mm-hmm. because you can't guarantee that you're going to find that perfect candidate, because you can't guarantee that person exists, right? Mm-hmm. And even if they do exist, you can't guarantee they're going to want to come and work mm-hmm. for your client for the mm-hmm. amount of money your client's going to so want to pay. what you're selling is the time. Right, you're, you're not it's just the, the time; it's Focus. the process yeah, that you put and, in and, place. And, yeah, kind of the things that you are currently already doing for free for nothing. You can, on a retained basis, you can put your client in the position at the end of a project where they are making their decision from all the options that are available to them yeah, in the okay. market at this time, which you can't do on a contingent basis. Fair. And do the clients really <coughs> understand it? Well, that's where <laughs> that's you good. have to be able to explain <laughs> it. But that's where you have the the three retainers being yeah. sold. Yeah, and not, not yeah. No, yeah. yeah. But, but in a, in a world in a very competitive market, no, so yeah. take rec to rec for example. Yeah, yeah. How hard or easy would it be for you to move to a to retain model tomorrow? So I've taken two. Yeah. Um, one I delivered on. One I didn't. It keeps me awake at night. Mm. Um, <laughs> literally, no, it does. It's on my mind. Barry's with like, every uh, phone don't tell me about that. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, in my mind, I failed, and that's you know what not what I set out to do. Mm. I, I set out to give them. A, a, 
end result. Um, but I think the client appreciates the fact that, as you mentioned, they've paid for the project, they've paid for the process, they've paid for the time. Mm -hmm. And this is what mm -hmm. I then say to my recruiters, if I can get a retainer out of a recruitment business, you can do anything. <laughs> it's anything is possible. You've just got to ask the mm -hmm. question, and that's what I think a lot of them don't do: is is value their services and value their time. But that's mm -hmm. interesting. You say that. What do you think the question is? Like I had this the other day. When mm. you say like you need to ask the question. Yeah. What what do what would you think the question would be? For like, me, it's take the job specification yeah. and say this is suitable for a retained project yeah, because yeah. not all of them are. There's lots that yeah. wouldn't yeah, be suitable yeah. at all. But if in your mind, as you're going through the process and you're taking the job specification in detail, if a retained assignment is going to deliver the best results to your client, you're actually giving them a disservice by not doing mm. that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, We've got. I think we've got a couple of questions on this okay. as a or a couple of comments on this as a hot topic, haven't we? Mm -hmm. I, I get a lot of grief from. Jerry about my lack of Christmas jumper. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Um, he, I mean, he then also goes on to say, Barry Cullen on the money with the contingent recruited, not uh, doing retained, yeah. uh, off the mark, not wearing a Christmas jumper. <laughs> <laughs> What's Alex Dick saying? If, uh, Alex says, uh, he's about automation, so he's, uh, he's basically saying, if you if you automated it, you could have a load of jobs on at once, which is the point about efficiency, right? Yeah. In that you yeah. get rid of the, the shipment of work. Oh my God. Just no. take over. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I can't not swear. <laughs> no, no, that's a really fair point. Um, question for you, Rebecca. In terms of what you do into like selling CVs, do you take money up front or any part like payment up front? Hundred percent up front. Yeah. Right. And I think that's the point, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and I'm glad right. you touched on that because I, yeah. I think all business models are kind of going to that you got to pay me for my time first because again in, in, in kind of litigation and solicitors and, and lawyers they will always take money up front as well won't they Terry in your world <coughs> if, uh, if I want to invoice finance or factor excuse the, the, the kind of yeah. the, the, obviously the differences but if I want to um, get paid on an invoice that I've fired out am I going to get 90% of it 50% of it 60% of it usually not but certainly in recruitment 90% plus straight away okay on a perm invoice Perm mm -hmm. invoice usually mm -hmm. a little bit less, sixty, yeah. seventy percent. Yeah. But again, same thing, same sort of thing, right? In that you're retaining some of that back mm -hmm. for assurances and guarantees and that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. The, 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 uh, uh, I, I guess principle. we've in recruitment. What the the point I want to kind of get to is that we almost do too much for free and always have done, and because that's always how we've done it, yeah. we're almost in that thing now of you know the, um, the 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 monkeys in the cage thing of I uh, don't press the button why because we don't press the button and we don't know why we don't press the button anymore <laughs> we just don't press the button it's that kind of thing isn't it because like yeah. we, we just do it like. yeah but also we're sorry if you don't mind no, me no, jumping in of course we're just as contingent swear. recruiting yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> fuck it just do it <laughs> who cares <laughs> <laughs> who cares not to do yeah. 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 don't press the red button we're the monkeys in the cage aren't we the big sweary yeah 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 we can get it out and post it just give Nathan some more work to do remember what you sorry you were saying no. Oh, Do like oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the thing is, as contingent recruiters, we're just accustomed to we we take the brief and then we disappear, and then we do a whole lot of stuff, and then the result is just you know the the candidates, the CVs. When actually, what we don't realise is it's the journey that's valuable. It, what actually having visibility of of where you've been, who you've identified, what they've said, if they're interested, if they're not interested, why they're not interested, what would make them interested and collecting all of that information and giving the client visibility of that journey to arrive at an eventual destination that they then accept as the best option that's available to them. Having that had been done thoroughly and rigorously with a, 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 system, a systematic process that they can see, mm -hmm. that's the bit that we don't show them at the moment. As a con We can't, right? Because they... <coughs> They can just take their candidates, our yeah. candidates and, yeah. and go. It's not well, no, financially or Barry commercially viable. <laughs> yeah. no, and Big if, bad if Barry. You, if you're, <laughs> I don't know, is there only one man? Yeah. You know, <laughs> week two, week three, you know, if you yeah, yeah, don't have any financial yeah. commitment. But also, without that financial commitment, you're too, you can't carry that job out thoroughly. Because no. if you put all your eggs in that basket and then yeah. they pull the rug from you part way through, then you're screwed aren't you so you do need the financial commitment to actually do the job properly but what we don't do as contingent recruiters is give the client the visibility of that journey someone gave me a brilliant analogy the day of a guy that um, is in one of our advanced groups and he said it's like he said it's dawned on me 
I've got it. It's like Uber, right? Uber didn't change the time it takes to get a taxi to you. But what they did was give you visibility of the journey. And that means that you you accept the eventual. It might be the same result, Mm -hmm. but you accept that result as the best result that's available to you. And you see... Yeah, yeah, even driving like driving circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Jordan said the other day, <laughs> like, and when you can see that he's stuck in traffic because there's been some sort of problem or something, yeah. you tip him. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Do you? <laughs> he did. In Shropshire, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're ringing his neck. <laughs> Just the, the last bit for me on the end. Is it a UK thing that we work contingent? So can I know, I've noticed on your socials recently, you've been doing a lot more international stuff, right? Yeah. Which is great. And is it more of an accepted model outside of the UK? In Europe, yes. Yeah. yeah. When I first started working as a contingent recruiter, my first few projects were one in Germany, in France, in Central Europe, on mm-hmm. retained basis, and they just said, yeah. And and it was and like, I could uh, do this. mind blowing. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> I'm gonna set up a training business in the future. <laughs> No way, no, yeah. no way did I think I was ever going to be a trainer. Um, and, and in Europe, historically, it's been the, that's been the classic way to work um, on a retained basis. North America, no, that's always been it's generally contingent. But they're very service-led, aren't they? I mean, even if you look at like in Vegas and stuff like that, like if your service isn't on point, that's then they just mm. bin you off and then move you to the next one, don't they? Yeah. Mm. So I think, but I, th- I, th- I think you're right. I think it's almost geographically sp- uh, specific, isn't it, in terms of where contingent will work and where where. Um, it retained doesn't work. have to be. It doesn't have no, to No, no, I think what, what the point I was making was though that there are businesses out there at the minute who could maybe try the model with their European client base, oh, certainly yeah. like the tech world, for example, um, but the and, key and, and sort of just to kind of ease the nerves and be like, oh, I can do this. And the key to it is, uh, when I was saying, you know, what do you think the question is, some people think, oh, it's just I just have to ask them for the retainer. But I've found the key question is, are you getting what you want and what mm-hmm. you need and when you mm-hmm. want it from mm-hmm. the model that you're using at the moment? Because if you are, there's no point. No. If, if they are, there's no, no yeah. point trying to push something on them. But if they're not, then yes, it is your obligation to explain that given this and this, I'm able to deliver the best result that's available to you in the market at this time. Yeah. It's also it's amazing how much just some form of financial commitment from a yeah. client. Yeah. yeah gives you as a recruiter the opportunity to test whether they're actually fully serious engaged. or not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. just asking the question. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Invest I've, them I've in the client. process though, doesn't it? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've, I've got a client whose average placement fee is about 100 grand, right? So that's nice. average placement fee. Mm. And he, charge, he, ch- he gets retained, yeah, mm. but he only charges a thousand pounds as his retained yeah. fee. And it's, it's, mm. he's effectively wants to remain a contingent recruiter, mm. yeah, but he just does that thousand pounds because he knows it's that's that consultation not a consultation fee, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, not a tie yeah, kicker. Yeah. That's somebody that's going to pay, mm. yeah. pay me a bit yeah. of money. That shows they're much more likely to actually engage with me, mm. feedback on CVs, do proper interview processes. So is it multifaceted then, is it? Is it? Is it a case that it's not just about showing the journey? Is it about removing the tie kickers? I mean, you, 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 you've had a few phone calls, haven't you, in terms of just absolute tie kickers and, and, and time wasters, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, that's why I charge for calls, because even that like kind of discovery call yeah. thing that people call it, like I just don't do those for free now, because I was doing mm-hmm. them and then giving people loads of feedback on the CV and whatever, and then they disappear off and that's it you never hear from them because actually they didn't either didn't want to see me and were just being creepy and weird or, or they did you know maybe they did but they just wanted free advice basically yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Can I just, pick just your took the snippets of what you've said and were like that's yeah. enough for me I can whereas I can now because like, yeah. I charged that like initial half hour call get to know the client and if they if there's someone that wants to pay and go ahead then we, you know we don't even need to chat for the full half hour it'd be like yeah cool just sort mm. this out All right. and then I take that off their bill um, that charge and then if they're not if there might be someone that actually I can't really afford to pay you to do it all but you know tell me what I should be doing and then that gives them loads of mm. advice and, mm-hmm, and information mm-hmm. for them to go off and mm. sort out their CV themselves mm-hmm. so everyone feels like they're winning from it and I don't feel like oh, I'm using up all Used. this time mm-hmm. and so throwing if we it away touch back on the automation thing then does that kind of remove an element of tie kickers or does that re- do would that force people to start going back into the contingent model or would it would it edge people more over to to kind of retained or or, or kind of payment or front type model because arguably you could use ai yeah. to get rid of those tie kickers couldn't you and you could use that as a as a way of kind of filtering out the the shit bunch of stuff that, that, that Nick was talking about I didn't say it <laughs> <laughs> but recruitment is a funnel isn't it let's be honest you know at the top of the funnel we need AI to do as much of that as possible for us mm-hmm. and let us concentrate so the, the money is that bit there realistically mm-hmm. so is there not like a a point you know like salary point at which 
retain I would imagine certainly mm. sort of banking and financial services world yeah. when you're after kind of C level positions mm. big salaries important roles mm. that would generally be on a on a mm. on a retained that's basis. a great question yeah it, it, Historically, yes, it has always been reserved for um, executive and senior positions. However, what what we've found in well the past few years is that there are lots of niche, very niche skill sets that crop, that crop up now. There are lots of people and firms and um, operations in awkward locations in the world where mm. we've never we've never inhabited before. Never mind um, set up commerce or industry or big mega projects that are difficult and they're really difficult and the financial commitment allows you to put in place a process that can solve a problem that the contingent model can't so it can it, it can be helpful to solve problems lower down mm. and even like I had a, a mate last year who was really struggling with his call centre it was a financial services call centre actually sales people only mm. 25 27k but he just could not get the quality of people the agencies were worn out with it mm. and he was really struggling and eventually there's only so many candidates in that market anyway isn't there, that, that, that you can look I mean, at there was know. a lot but the <laughs> contingent <laughs> recruiters had just worn they just got worn out with it and it, it was at the bottom of everybody's take the first files. five yeses yeah. move them on and kind and of I don't blame them, I don't blame them, you know, they had other stuff to work on, whereas with some financial commitment, I was able to put the effort in to put an avatar, okay, it's a different solution, you don't put the same executive search process in that you would for a a CEO for a, you know, Mm. a bank, but you can you can put a process in that will work for that position with the financial commitment, as you say. And that's the point, right, within... There's, a, there's an assumption I find within the recruitment industry generally, particularly within t- contingent recruiters, that retained recruitment means third, third, third. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's not the case. No. It's, it, it's no. whatever it needs to be. It can be like a piece of intelligence. Sorry, it, might a, or it might be like a monthly retainer exactly. in, the, in the lawyer yeah. sense. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which you then draw down again. Just being creative be. with your fee yeah. structure yeah. or whatever, yeah. That, that yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but making sure that you're getting kind of. Commitment yeah, yeah, commitment it's a commitment financial that allows you to do yeah, what you need yeah, to do to make yeah. sure that you put yeah, them yeah. in that position at the end of are, the project. Are there a lot yeah. of suppliers then, Chester, in, in kind of supplying into the recruitment world who are going down that 25-30% upfront or 50% um, upfront type stuff? When I engage my suppliers who, who are then introduced to my end clients, recruiters, I insist that they get money up front mm. before they even start the project. So I write into my terms, mm. if we're successful in implementing and introducing you, CRM company A, into recruitment company, you get your cash before you do anything. Because that gives that level of commitment that says, I'm taking this seriously. Yeah. What about things like demos and stuff like that? I, I, you see, the, the demos and the free trial things, I've, start, I've stopped doing that sort of stuff anymore. Because I just think it's a lot of time wasting. Yeah, I do do demos, but the free trial and all that stuff, I don't think there's enough commitment out there. I think there's too many tyre kickers out there who are bright enough to go... It's a marketing... Yeah, like let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. And you never hear it from them again. We're putting in um, yeah. a demo tap on rectals to kind of try and eliminate exactly that. Yeah. Which is loads of people jumping onto demos just to get a demo of the just product. Just to get a demo. I spoke to... Um, he was a sales and marketing director for a CR, big CRM vendor. And he had a very, very large agency that he was demoing a product to, who had all pretended that they were different branch managers from throughout the UK, but they're actually, just a little Google search will show you, this software development manager, the CTO, the head of marketing, and it was just like, all you want to do is see the product and see what it does, they right? Mr. Shop like, in you your just they waste they yeah, yeah. Mr. Shop in That's you, it, yeah. and the check it out. Yeah, that yeah, 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 no, no, this is happens. true, right? Just yeah. pay the fifty quid a month, exactly. eighty five quid a month, yeah. and get access to the product. But yeah, so we we yeah we we saw that as a trend. So we're putting that into rectals where there'll be a demo tab where the people can go on to and see a demo of the product and then make a decision from there because there are trends that are changing in buying decisions there is and yeah. and that needs to kind of be accounted for i suppose so right, we, w- go on. i was gonna say if you take a look back at that uh, kind of the last 12 months then with kind of what the economy is doing all that sort of stuff is there anything that you would have done differently do you reckon as, as opposed to how it all panned out stuff that's within your control oh, <laughs> regrets <laughs> <laughs> Got a few. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, Wolfman, I, would have, I would have liked to have adopted your model, which is when I started this gig, and um, Adam will shoot me for this, I gave away too much of my time for free. Thought I was helping people because I'm yeah. stupid like that. I didn't, yeah, stupid I like that. Stupid like that. Now, I don't do that anymore. 
if you want me, this is what it's going to cost. Sign up to it, and we agree on the journey. But Do you I think did, some of that is knowing your worth yeah, and going through I, that journey of like, hang on a minute, no, 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 I'm, I'm valuable. My time is yeah. valuable, and not really. One of the assumptions before. you make, rightly or wrongly, is that the client should know better. Yeah, yeah, and they don't, <laughs> fairly. Oh, no. People and you, have skin in the game. Exactly. They'll turn up as well. Yeah. Nine times you'll book a free call, and then people don't turn up because mm. it's free. Yeah. Like if you do a free mm. event or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all these sort of free webinars yeah, 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 and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Sign up. To That's why we charge fifty pound for an interview. Yeah, <laughs> fifty pounds to come on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, that's would be my mind. Yeah, that's a model. that's a good one. Yeah. What about you, Wolfman? Well, conversely, I would, I mean, I guess it, it probably it probably depends very much on where you are in your journey and what it yeah. is that you offer and where, and where you sit in your market and all that sort of stuff. I think that what, if I could do it all again this year, what I would have done much more from the start of the year is is is, that, is give a bit mm. more into, yeah. and particularly I, I'm talking a lot about LinkedIn and sort of social channels and things like that because certainly as the year went on, they got more and more productive for me, mm -hmm. but they got productive for me and productive for Pulse Outsource because we gave more, you know, it was like, this is, let me tell you how I think you should do this or using my experience of this many years doing whatever, five tips for the mm. next time you go and look at an invoice finance deal or, yeah, but offering that and not expecting anything in return. Um, and I, I, again, it's just something that I kind of picked up from looking at other people that are successful with that type of approach. That, that's a big um, a trend in sort of buying decisions at the minute. So Gary V touches on, on one of his talks where mm. it's giving away um, substance mm. and actual value, mm. but without the need for a transaction on that day. Like, mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give you this, yeah. not so that you buy from me, but because you need it. Mm. And yeah. in the future, you will buy from me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, exactly your your thing blew up because of because of exactly that, though, didn't it? Where you you. I heard something else. <laughs> <laughs> Back door. <laughs> yeah, we've always given away as much yeah. as we can. But I think there's a difference here because yeah. you're talking about you know uh, effectively creating a thing and top tips or you know a toolkit or whatever mm -hmm. and letting the market have that. Yeah. Right. Whereas Chester's talking about half an hour of his life. An yeah, hour of his yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Is you could you yeah. could commit a bit of time into producing that which you then give away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and then that's not you. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Same time. amount of time, half an hour each, for example. Yours can reach a thousand people yeah. in a day. Yours is that one person who's taking yeah, up that yeah. half an hour of your time. And I'm doing it yeah. once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing it. Yeah, you've got to give up. Yeah, yeah. fifteen hundred hours. But it's a nice balance yeah. between the two as well. We do like group sessions and group webinars and free sessions, but with groups rather than. We've, I mean, we've, we've, we've toyed yeah. with the idea of group, doing group demos. So, mm -hmm. so you say, okay. right, our next demo will be on this yeah. date at this time. If you'd like to come, let us know. Yeah. And then we just demo, because it's online, right? You just demo online to a big group of people mm -hmm. at the same time. And maybe even chuck <coughs> a little bit of scarcity of resource in there as well. And okay. say, just so you know, only about 80% of you can actually get You're giving it away, man. You're giving the game away. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, that's, actually, still work. <laughs> yeah. that's actually really interesting because... <laughs> There'll be questions, of, of thinking of, uh, of it as a kind of potential buyer, mm. you might come up with a question that I didn't even think yeah. of. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, fucking, I didn't even think of that. It's really yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 Mm. It so, works really well. Yeah, that, that, that could work really well. What about you, Angela? <laughs> biggest regret this year? Uh, biggest regret this year, not keeping the momentum going through the summer. Um, things started to go very quiet this year, I think, mm. after sort of March, April-ish. Mm. And I just wish I'd just ploughed through it like a steam train and just kept going, kept talking to people. Um, even those that were having a wobble and were talking about letting people go instead of hiring. Um, I wish I'd spent more time with them because mm -hmm. now they are hiring again. And mm. I'm on a little bit of a back foot trying to catch up and yeah, my year is going to end on a high but I'm a lot busier than I actually needed to be if I'd have just stayed on that even keel and I think that's another thing that recruiters need yeah. to do is just always stay mm. nice and steady yeah. get rid of this highs and lows just, yeah. just better, keep better off at 80% consistently Absolutely. through the year than this yeah. sort of 100% mm. but it shows that's I'm still fun. a recruiter doesn't it yeah. <laughs> no, nobody wants to sit on a that's train the coaster, everyone loves the roller coaster <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like your approaches to drinking yeah <laughs> Yeah, I do love a good binge drink. Barry, what for your side? Any any crazy regrets? Um, get rid of the beard. <laughs> yeah, get rid of the beard. <laughs> <laughs> Especially during winter Wear time. A Christmas yeah. jumper to the rest <laughs> Have you updated your LinkedIn profile yet or not? Your profile picture? What, my profile photo for about 20 years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
know back when I didn't have any. Do you know how many people I said to us were like, fucking hell, I didn't realise that's what Barry looked like. No, I haven't got your answer. I think uh, regret for me would have probably been a bit too nice sometimes. Okay. Um, That's a I lawyer know, saying that as well. It's not really <laughs> you imagine. It might not be the persona uh, that's out there. Uh, but, you know, on behalf of and with recruiters, agreeing that end clients should be given more opportunity to pay over periods of time. Sometimes I should have been a bit stronger with our recruiters saying, no, look, You've, you've given them three mm-hmm. payment plans before they haven't met any of them they're not going to do it this time either mm-hmm. you know so there's a little bit of that I think just I think it's what you were saying Chester earlier about um, you know taking your time and clients should know better yeah, it's the it's the fact that you, the, the humanity in you assumes that if someone's saying it that yeah. it's going to be right yeah. you know, yeah. so I think I should have yeah a little just in a few occasions <coughs> um, and then the other thing is just hire faster for us you know, mm-hmm. just to grow the, grow the firm quicker yeah. just you know d- Lawyers, right? We love an economic downturn because mm. disputes and fights. And, you know, uh, so that's the Insolvency is all of that sort of, yeah. all of that sort of great stuff. Yeah, that's the, that's the chaos is being yeah. 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 Terry's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, yeah, so any regrets Rebecca. on your side? I don't know. But I had a really busy summer actually. I was, <coughs> okay. I was just saying it was quite. It was, I was absolutely flat out over the summer, which was weird because <laughs> it never normally is. But I don't know. I wouldn't say I've got any regrets. I don't really do regrets. Or okay, anything point. you'd have changed um, as a result year. of not being happy or regretful about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, d- I don't know. I think I'm I'm, to, I'm, right. <laughs> I can't because I'm pretty pleased with how my year's gone. So no, good. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, good. That's, that's good. good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine. Proper sadist over here. No, but there must be something yeah, that you don't enjoy. Yeah, I think Lou. Apart from divorcing my husband, Sienna. <laughs> Back on the market. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, apart from that, I can't think of anything else. I well, it's funny because the, the next half an hour, day. once we go off live, is blind date. So this is. Let's go dating. <laughs> It's well, it's really cute, cute yeah. loads of creepy comments now. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. the surprise guest. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's hear your side. <laughs> oh no, no, it's been a really good year. I mean, I think, like I was saying before, people are really keen to just get away from. Barry sees it all the time too, and um, I get away from the contingent model, and so um, we're helping more people than ever, and we love it, really like it. So yeah. yeah, it's good, all good. Don't know what I'd do differently next year. Maybe like geographically for us, as you said, going more. There's a lot out there, and the and the world is big, and there's a lot of work out there. And the more that we um, make kind of first uh, find first clients in new locations, the more we find there's even more. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like North a America, box, isn't it? You kind of open it. Australia, all sudden, yeah. yeah. Even Europe's like starting to open up, so I'm starting to think like translations and mm-hmm. you know. Um, AI can help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> Leverage yeah. it. Yeah. So it's exciting. What about you, Sean? Uh, any regrets or what would I change? Um, I think I, I would probably be more decisive. I think that there was a lot of times where we kind of just sat on things where we kind of just ummed and about it a bit too mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think if we'd have kind of pulled the trigger on certain things quicker, I think I think that probably would have made a difference in some of the things that we were doing. Was that down to sentiment? in the market and the feeling of uncertainty mm. Mm. yeah I think look, there, there were there were some kind of personnel decisions that we, we probably should have made a lot quicker mm. and that was exactly that it was the humanitarian element of kind of like, oh, but you know what they're nice We just uh, maybe we can pull them through and all that sort of mm. stuff and actually from a business point of view it just wasn't the right thing um, but then even kind of some of the, the um, business decisions that we made I think there was a few times where I'd be really kind of reluctant to pull a trigger on something or there'd been times where sort of me and you had been debating about like should we do this should we do that and you kind of get to a point and it's just like yeah we just haven't moved on it yeah. and next thing you know it's like two three months later it's like oh, we probably should have moved on that sooner yeah yeah so I think yeah if you're going into next year that that's probably where I'd be at is I'd, I'd be looking to make decisions quicker and and actually put us in a situation where we, we, we've always been kind of two feet first see what happens and then just kind of find our way through it in that way and that's always worked really well for us that's and what I think they say so fail quickly don't they yeah, yeah. well this yeah. is yeah. it get on and do the thing and then if it doesn't work fine move yeah. on to something else yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it and yeah. I think that, that's probably where we, we've tried to be a little bit more sensible than we than we should have or well, certainly from my point of view and I think if I was going to do it again mm. I'd be just like just dive in let's see what happens have you read uh, Blink by Malcolm Gladwell no 
Brilliant book for that. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Really good. Has he got pictures? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pop-up book. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a pop-up. laughs> <laughs> Every page, it makes you blink. Push <laughs> it. <laughs> it's good. I'll say in a nutshell, so you don't have to read it. It's basically that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. Just for the reason I can't <laughs> Some people like reading, some people don't. Um, some I'm an audio book. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I won't spoil it then. I won't yeah. spoil it. It's a fantastic book. It, is really, it massively hey. helped me with decision making. <laughs> And everybody else that I mean it's not that you're not a good decision maker it's just that you you're doubting yourself whether especially having made some rash decisions which I had too I'm a feet first person too same as you and mm. um, it's getting that balance right isn't it and that book like hit is spot on for that well this is it though if you think about when we started Mark Sharma group it was literally like the, the decision was taken from us it was like we were going to get canned by not, but not because we did anything wrong right <laughs> Other something Tyrant. happened yeah we, we swore too much yeah <laughs> um, <coughs> No, but we, <laughs> our, our plan was to set up in April 2020, right? We, we, we set worst time, COVID and all that sort of no, stuff. We were no. to set up in April no, 2020. It's a stupid idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we were supposed to set up in April 2020. That's kind of the day we had earmarked. And we ended up setting up in June 2017 because when we worked somewhere else, there were some infrastructure changes and all that sort of stuff. And we were like, shit, we're going to fucking go soon. Mm. So we were just like, all right, let's just do it. Let's just let's just set up. And before, you know, we registered, we started put logos together, all that sort I of just, stuff. I love, I love the fact that you just tried to tell us, we, we're kind of jumping feet first kind of people, but your plan was to start up three years later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're talking uh, about what? kicking a can down the road. <laughs> I mean, there's, the that's a, three years about the furthest yeah, we could kick that can. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> well, like, well, I didn't say we point. No, no. I didn't say we were decisive, yeah. I say we do our best work when we jump in two feet first. Ah, okay. We try to be decisive because, you know, like society tells you, you should think about this and like yeah. pressures of like other people, no, 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 are you sure you want to do this? Like, oh, fuck that, let's just dive in, let's see what happens. Yeah. It's like jumping yeah. into a pool, isn't it? Yeah. How about you? What's your, What's your regrets big old regret? Yeah. Um, <coughs> mine's not really work related though. It's, it's, really neither was mine. No, it's more <laughs> kind of, I wish I'd have come to divorce the your mo- husband yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I'd have, um, I wish I'd have come to the mindset that I'm at now sooner um, okay. in this year which is kind of we got it wrong the whole hamster wheel thing the yeah you know go to uni then get a good job then get married then have kids then buy a house then get a car then do this then, and then like your life will be great and then kind of sitting there and be like it's just this is stupid yeah. this is so mm. stupid mm. like i stand outside my house and i look at it sometimes i'm like you're not worth 250 grand <laughs> <laughs> like, there's so much more <laughs> i could do I with 250 <laughs> grand than to live in you yeah like, it's you know. a big thing isn't there? No, but, my, like it's so stupid little things yeah i got rid of my expensive mm. car because i was like yeah. you're not worth 400 pound a month like this is yeah. a stupid thing to do yeah. what what wow i get to drive around in a fancy car so what some other guy can look at me and go it's a nice car mate like and yeah, just but that's a sense of realisation that comes with maturity, yeah. I would suggest. Yeah. But age. it's kind of a lot more holistic than yeah. that, because I'm like, yeah. like for, for me, the whole thing was just stop and smile the flowers. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm looking at my kids growing up, and they're growing up so fast, and they're developing like amazing personalities, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, dad, daddy's got to go to the office, and then, then I'll do this, and then we'll do that, and daddy's got work to do, and I'm just like, no, fuck work, no. Mm. What Daddy's got to do is watch you two grow up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've done more. I'll make money the rest of my life. Kids. I'll spend money the rest of my life. You know, mm. I've lived in debt and I've lived in like comfort, like but I lived in both those scenarios. And it's sort of just kind of assessing all of that and being like, yeah. Now I wish I'd have come to this point earlier in the year because I could have had a great year, mm. a great year with my kids and like my like you know, do you know what I mean? Like enjoying the things that are, that are important to me rather than sort of no I've got to you know, at least got you got to this point yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's it, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know. people never do I mean yeah. this, this nice went Dr Phil, Phil really yeah, quickly yeah I know, right? I know. Really Dr. that's Phil what I was like, like, like do I say it do I say it but yeah it's but cool, the thing right? is the more people I talk to about it the more people who are in exactly the same boat there's so many yeah. people that I'm speaking yeah. to that are like no yeah you're right I, I like, we were lied to yeah to that point two years in Covid yeah similar to your good self I decided to exit a marriage of 30 odd years Wow. Uh, it's it's happening. It's a pig in shit on my own. <laughs> doing what I need to do. And it's not all about the big car, the big money, no. the big salary. No. It isn't. It's all a myth. 
but you're driven to that, aren't you? <coughs> well, I've just rented a house for myself because I'm separated you go. from... Oh, there right. you go. Oh, this, look, look, look what you got us all, <laughs> all telling our stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Five minutes. Five. You can talk a little bit. You can talk. It's fine. <laughs> right. Shall we do? Let's do something fun to close off. Nope. Uh, yeah. Christmas oh. traditions. That'd be a good That's one. Cool. Uh, yeah. Let's add some of the comments. There Mark, are there are no questions. It's just comments. <laughs> well, Mark. Mark said something about something. Yeah. No. It's just. I think Neil's yeah, having yeah. a midlife crisis. Fuck you, Mark. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> lawyers <laughs> feed on. Lawyers feed on the pain of uh, of normal people. Yeah, that's what I said. They're just comments. There's no questions there. It's just, it's just, it's just people throwing shade. <laughs> <laughs> what's Ju- Julia Cook? Aunt Fisher. <laughs> what's Julia Cook what saying, Bibs? You put your head above them. the parapet. <laughs> Julia right. Cook said artificial <laughs> intelligence uh, automation is great for repetitive non-fee generating tasks. Fee generation and relationship building requires actual Chat human GPT intelligence. Wrote that comment for yeah, him. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. No, let's do Christmas traditions. Just to close off, got five minutes. Any Christmas traditions, business or personal? Oh, well, Fish first. and chips on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Really? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That, that one. Nice one. Like that. You don't want to cook on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Isn't that when like, you start preparing all the like, dinner? <laughs> 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 You're not cooking in. You have We've got five minutes. Don't debate. Don't, 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 don't debate. Let, let, let do it. No, that, that, that's yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. Everyone yeah, else said that's nice. The Grinch said no. What? You don't have a mini Christmas dinner? Do you all do the Christmas Eve boxes with the kids? Mine no, love I, that. No. Oh. Yeah, with like the reindeer food and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, with the, we have my a, a lush bath all, like, bomb crap. to get them into the bath, oh. basically. You They're 23, yeah. so they need a lot of Yeah, my wife does have the new pyjamas and yeah. the little hot chocolate thing and all that oh, sort of stuff. Nice. It just yeah. tries to keep them on a nice, calm, even level to get them into bed so that they will sleep. It's, it's, it's not a tradition yet, but it's, it's becoming a tradition. My kids now think that Santa... Um, and Rudolph yeah. want a uh, glass of whiskey. Do yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. A glass of whiskey. Yeah, yeah a glass of oh, a couple yeah. of whiskey. Yeah, a little bit for Rudolph as well. So, um, <laughs> Santa's lactose intolerant in our house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's bit, whiskey or wine. Yeah, <laughs> That's whiskey, all he yeah, a bit of whiskey and none of this like carrots for Rudolph stuff. No, no, no. We like just like a cake or a kebab or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <Santa's> just. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you put out your milk, milk and mince pie for Santa, nope, I'll put a nice Whiskey glass of and bread a and a filet mignon out for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, as it, we go to uh, the Ambleside Light Festival <coughs> every, uh, yeah, it's like the Ambleside. third uh, third weekend of every November. Mm. So that's where we, uh, that kicks off our Christmas. Oh, it, nice. Santa comes oh, and turns nice. all the lights yeah. on, big firework display. And we started doing it like a few years back and it's just every year we go and it's just got bigger and bigger like parade and all that sort of stuff we love it Beautiful. so yeah, christmas has already started at our house yeah i like to get each of my team an advent calendar like oh, okay. beauty one oh. for the girls like sweets and stuff for the boys or like men like beauty too fidget fidget toys <laughs> I <prefer to> have <laughs> sweets. Yeah. 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 Fidget toys with those with adhd <laughs> yeah the fidget toys yeah that's it for the adhd <laughs> that is exactly it <laughs> That is it. You can get in a fidget toy advent calendar. Yeah, I know you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah my yeah, wife's getting one. Oh, God, I need that. Yeah. Presumably, if you find it to want one, you just open them all on the first day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. That's what I said to her. I was like, what you don't understand is I'm not going to go in order. I'm fully just going to be like, that one looks, sounds like it might be good. <laughs> <laughs> all open before the 1st of December. <laughs> my daughter does that. She'll just like, if we let her loose on the on the advent calendar, she'll mm. just go nuts with it. And she'll just mm. eat the whole thing. Really? Yeah, I'm just like, you spoil it for yourself, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, when I was the only speech to get the chocolate ones and um, got a knife, just sliced it open, pulled the chocolate thing out, nice. left the empty box up on the, the, the table. Yeah. <laughs> That's intelligent, yeah. isn't it? I it was like a disappointing that. month after yeah. that, though, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Swap it with month. a sibling. This is where, you yeah, know. Nah, I should have opened yeah. somebody else's. Look what somebody did to yours. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you must have been really bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what, Terry, what about yours? Sorry. Christmas traditions? Um, I wouldn't really call it a tradition, but it's the only time of the year that I drink stupid amounts of Baileys. Okay. Um, I'd say that's From a tradition. From Christmas Eve onwards. Do you know what yeah. I discovered? I drink Baileys wrapping the presents on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know what Swinging I discovered about Baileys? It goes great with coffee. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, over Christmas yeah. time, yeah. babies and coffee. Yeah. Okay. There was one Christmas that was done. Replacement for milk, you mean, yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> or just I just babies. Yeah. Just yeah. a little bit of coffee powder in the yeah. babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when I was, I went to Weymouth for um, for one Christmas, 
and I had JD honey and we were just drinking from like the 21st all the way through to like I think like 27th or 28th and I started putting JD honey in my coffee with like yeah and that was Sometimes really nice, it nice? yeah it, it was good. It, it was really nice yeah. Bailey's a bit medicinal does anybody else <laughs> it's yeah. just a bit yeah, yeah. No. it's not right it's not right no. right well <laughs> let's let's, let's thank everyone for joining us on the live the uh i didn't know oh, how many people did we have on the live uh, up to 28 28 oh that's a that's, that's, that's is that a record that's a record yeah is last time was like 14 yeah, yeah. okay Actually, yeah. We deal normally with people York, watch it post we deal with that for yorkshire yeah. pudding yorkshire yorkshire pudding with dinner. christmas or dinner or not oh yes yes yes, yes. 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 Before, but now I will. Regard, yeah. 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 yeah regardless of whether it's beef or turkey yeah. yorkshire yeah, yeah. yeah. yorkshire is every time right yeah. Yeah. any yeah. excuse for a yorkshire and pigs in blankets yeah 100 oh, oh come yes. on they're good in the air right i think pudding's wrong brussels sprouts as well though yeah yeah sprouts is the one time a year that i make everybody eat sprouts ham we have ham or the bacon you know i've got to have sprouts it's got to be it's got to be yeah. Parsons yeah. lied to me. I always like, like right. yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, okay. <laughs> you might you might not remember this. Parsons lying on his plate like you're good looking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so my mum cut them up once to look like chips. And I was oh, like, no, 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 my no, mind no, didn't no, go to why we got no, chips. Indians for the Sunday do that, dinner. don't they? They call yeah. them Mogo chips or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, like chips? Yeah, no, they're cut She's a talented like, woman. Like, I don't know what you're saying. Like, like, <laughs> chunky, they look like chunky chips. Yeah, my mum used to do it as well. Oh, we're talking about chips. You mash them. No, so throw them in place of a potato. Yeah, we cut in. She made them look chips. You can talk. It's fine. It's only LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Let's just wave bye to everybody, and then we'll carry on on the live. Well, not the live. Um, off the live, on the podcast. I'm waving at the TV. Wait, you're waving at yourself. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Right. Let's do a quick ten minute break. Yeah. yeah. Get refreshments, wheeze, and all that out of the way, and then we'll do. We usually do like another I'll half an hour. Of, an hour now. Now. Yeah, just to like <laughs> kind of really shit that fun chat stuff. Okay, we're on live now, aren't we? Yeah. So are we back to recording? Yeah. Ready? So we can we can be potty mouthed again. We can be super potty mouthed. Yeah. yeah. Go, Go on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Show this. <laughs> I love that. Oh, right, so. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess well we've lost we've lost the weeds. <laughs> well she had to she had to get going and this went on longer than the, the, Rebecca ten, doesn't the stop. ten minute break went on longer than we thought it was going. <laughs> it's Rebecca's fault. Yeah. She just doesn't stop. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's the second ginger beer like? It's alright. Is it worse? <laughs> well, vodka so iron brew. You try that. <laughs> You gotta try it. Oh, that vodka iron brew is really good. I've had vodka Lucas in before. That was weird. Vodka iron brew. And a little hit at the same time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really speaks to your Scottish side. Speaks to some kind of alcohol pop that was a bit like that. Wild brew, that was it. Wild brew? Yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember drinking that in the park at like 14 years old. (laughs) 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 Rebecca's like, yeah, yeah, I'll probably boil you. No, I used to drink hooch and... Oh, hooch. Yes. Hooch. I remember when they bought it back. 2020. Oh, yeah. 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 We, we used to drink something we called gin cocktails. Uh, which is where you bought. Was this a boarding school Barry? <laughs> <laughs> boarding school Barry, that's what they call <laughs> <laughs> four, four, four pack, four pack of lager, half bottle, half bottle of gin. Yeah. You drink, drink half a bottle, oh. half a can of lager, top it up with gin. Jeez. Wow, that was our gin that's cocktail. Nice. Yeah. And then the second can was to get rid of the taste. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I what about you? Come on, you must have some drinking stories from back in the day. Um, no one's going to watch this bit. Don't worry. No, about sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, n- I never used to drink until I was twenty-five. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's good. So you used to go clubbing, night clubbing, all that, and then I found drink at twenty-five. And it's been downhill since then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, Olympic hopeful before you know, then. You know someone enjoys it when they yeah, drink Yeah, downhill. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm they a romantic not. almost. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't go out. Well, I do go out now, but I'm a, a whiskey and a, a brandy and a gin man. I like it. I love Student brandy. nights, we used to get a pound a pint. <laughs> yeah, pound a pint, pound yeah, yeah. shot. So we used to get a pint and then buy two shots of vodka. Yeah. 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 We had drink all you can nights. So it'd be like eight quid for, for, oh, for yeah, women yeah. and ten quid for yeah. lads. And you go, yeah, and go to the bar. And the first time I went to it, I went, went to the bar. I went, we can have a quadruple vodka and coke, please. And they went, oh, we can't. We can't. We can only do Possibly. singles. I was like, 
I love four I six. Vodka and coke and three shots of vodka, please. Like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Four in yeah, yeah. Right, cheers. <laughs> Those nights are mad when you think about it. Because we used to have one like that. So yeah. it was a fiver for girls and a tenner for boys. Yeah. They never what? Really couldn't you do get that, that now. nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I yeah, used to be... The Golden Cross and Cobb used to do it. Like Christmas Eve as well. We used to go every Christmas Eve. Which when I used to be in yeah, Napa, they used to have this. There was a club called yeah. Coyotes. Yeah. There was a bar called Coyotes, and it's based off like you know the Coyote Ugly movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> so it's based off that. And if you got there before eight o'clock, you paid five. Uh, you paid a fiver. It was separate pounds back then. So you paid a fiver, and it was bottomless cocktails until twelve o'clock. Wow. People so would die, surely. <laughs> I'm sure some people did. did. Yeah, yeah. Prob- yeah, probably. But you just go through the cocktail list. I did nearly die many nights out on this like, five pound a week wow. drink. Co- the Collie used to do that, didn't it? 50p a drink on a yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Collie used to do that. It's, it's gone the other way now, hasn't it? It was too expensive oh, for people to go out and drink. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. A lot of people Loads aren't. Of pubs are shut down, to, aren't they? Yeah. I used to run the pub crawls at uni. <laughs> So go, 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 go round all the bars. Your uni days sound like fun. So you used to run them. <laughs> 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 I'd make posters so go, and yeah. flyers. The bar crawl, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> bar crawl, Barry, yeah. We go to all the bars. We go to all the bars and go, right, we're going to bring 100 people here. Uh, we bring 100 people here, we're going to be here for 45 minutes. You know, what deals can you put on for us? Yeah, uh, yeah fair, right. And then they say, well, how do you know? How do we know who's on the pub call? Is it going to be vouchers? We make a t-shirt. No. Print, no, we get the t-shirts <laughs> printed up, and you'd have to buy the t-shirt to go on the pub call. I love that. Yeah? Yeah. And so you'd get the money for the selling of the t-shirts. So and that's the retainer, the bars, isn't it? Yeah, and the bars <laughs> yeah. give you all the deals back. So Absolute the, entrepreneur. So it costs you, you nothing <laughs> apart from the price of a few t-shirts. <laughs> Well, whilst we've kind of hit that subject then, let's, let's talk about unique marketing then, because that's obviously a unique marketing point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've done this before. He does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll have you know, we're 36 episodes in, I've mastered the arts. <laughs> so, let's talk unique marketing. So, um, I mean, I know of a specific really funny marketing point, I'm not going to name the names, but somebody put a Black Friday deal out on candidates. Wow! Wow! Um, How did that make the candidates <laughs> on, on what? feel? On the candidates, right. they they said they sent an email out on the candidates. Look, Black Friday deal. These candidates, and it was a reduction of rate. Um, it wasn't a bog off then. So, <laughs> so they used no, it was like this so candidate used, used to be eleven, pa- no, like fifteen pound an hour people. is now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, there's also that a particularly sensitive they? word with selling of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did not at all, did he? My, so my, I, I've got a good one from a, from a recruiter many years ago who was recruiting into financial services. Yeah, yeah uh, where obviously you know they got bribery policies. Yeah. And sort of yeah. Stuff, mm-hmm. uh, and sent a physical letter, which I quite like, because that's different that's to different, calls yeah. and emails or whatever. Um, but the letter said, um, take a chance on me. Yeah, I was like, the British yeah. okay. with a With a lottery ticket in it. Nice. Yeah. And nice. Of, the 100, of the 100 he sent out, 27 came back with a complaint saying, I can't believe how much paperwork you've just made me fill in because now I've got bribery reporting <gasps> to do. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. How yeah. much yeah. can yeah. you not know your market? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Terry's like, I got so, one of those less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I just want a former. Either way, I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I bought this nifty jumper with it. Yeah. <laughs> it does say a lot about those markets, though, I think, though. to a to a point. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. in terms of like the bureaucracy and the and the madness yeah. of it all. Having worked in several major banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You've got yeah. to know your audience. Well, that's the point. True, true. That's true. No, I just wouldn't bother marketing them. Yeah, be quiet. Yeah, yeah. Just don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't. I think oh, wow. yeah, I think LinkedIn's become a really interesting platform to to kind of market on because it's if you look at it now, anybody that's sitting there saying buy my shit, mm. people just aren't interested. There's no Correct. engagement. But mo- most people are doing that. Mo- most that's if you look do. through your LinkedIn, but that's, feed, that's what I'm saying. That's where they most come back feed to. is exactly yeah, that. Buy my shit. Buy my shit. But before yeah. it never used yeah. to be. Funny story. Funny be. story. Buy my shit. Like it's yeah. just yeah, yeah it's, it's so transparent. With, no, but, with but it never used there. to be though, did it? Mm. Before you used to have like real sort of interesting content on LinkedIn and all that sort of stuff, and then that started to move into oh actually do you know what? I really like some of your shit. Let's let's have a chat. Maybe we'll buy something. To now just like buy my shit. Just buy it. Mm. I don't know, I think it's, what's what's hard from my perspective anyway, is when I do a beautiful synopsis and I'll spend hours Mm. writing war and peace and really engaging content in my mind and it gets no traction whatsoever. Mm. I put up a picture of a monkey in a yoga position and it goes viral. So you almost- Did you know why that happens So That's why you need a strap line on every single post. Is that what it is? Is that what I'm missing? No, do you know why that happens? (laughs) Tell me what's going on. I have a call to action on the end of every single post. But, but your stuff goes like far because 
LinkedIn want to be a social network. Okay. They don't want to be a business network. They want right. to compete well, with the likes of Facebook. Well, it didn't start like that, did it? No, it didn't. But but times change, people change, and like priorities change, right? right. Microsoft have invested in them. Microsoft do not own Meta or so Facebook, Insta, and all the rest of it. Right. This is their closest thing to a social network they have. Okay. They have a range of like m- the majority of their customer base are millennials and um, Gen X. Yeah. who are no longer using Facebook as much and are spending more time on LinkedIn. That's so they want it to be a social network. So because of that, they will actively push like social type posts. Right. So what you end up finding is those kind of recruiters who unknowingly will take a selfie and be like, oh, I've just come back from Morocco, but also I recruit for like, you know, engineers. Mm. They go everywhere. Everyone sees that. Yeah. When you sit down and spend an hour putting together a really good detailed document and just doesn't go anywhere, it's because the algorithm isn't picking that up because people aren't going to engage with that as much as they are going to with a you know picture of a dog or a holiday or you know a hobby or an interest that these people are doing. So you're saying because there are people out there who are using it like a social platform as opposed to a business platform, they're the, the ones... The answer is use it as a social platform. If you want to generate more inbound inquiries on LinkedIn and if you want to generate more business on LinkedIn, start seeing it as a social network and not a business network. Engage with it as a social network and then it will come through. Not not at all. Well, this is the problem because Mm -hmm. I... I'm, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I put up a post about what supply to do. We all do it, how great we are, what we do, how we can save you time, money, and all that stuff. I put up a post of me mm-hmm. and my dog. Yeah. And my impressions went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic. But you and your dog are more important to people than what supply to do. And that's not, 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 not in an offensive way, but because we all know the adage people buy from people mm. right okay that that you got to extend that out a bit more it's people buy from people like them and people buy from people they like mm. right you've got to show them the person they can i can go on to google and find out about rec law and i can find out yeah. about how you're the one to go to for recruitment legal disputes or cvs or invoice finance mm. and you know i can do that i can do all of that i don't need linkedin or a social post to tell me who you are and what you're selling me what I do need LinkedIn to do, or what I do need my social platform to do, is tell me about tell me about you. Who are you? What do we have in common? When I speak to you on the phone, am I going to be like, I don't want to speak to this wanker? Or am I going to be like, he's like me. But this guy is like yeah. me. But he understands there's me. There's a dichotomy for me, because I, 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 I am a wanker. <laughs> 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 What was that? <laughs> what was that? I said, here's the thing, is that I'm a wanker though, so people don't like <laughs> no, no, most I'm people not. are. I don't like, I don't think, I don't like posting personal stuff on LinkedIn. Which is, which is fine. No, no, which I, is, I find it, I just don't like, like doing it. I, th- I think yeah. a, a nice middle ground on that, on this bit about people want to see you, they want to hear you, is video. So what you see now is, okay. a, and I don't do it yet, but I, I will be, but where you, where you see people actually, it's their sales pitch, yeah. but it's, they're just talking to a camera like this. Mm-hmm. And that that is a nice compromise between not having to just show everyone your personal life to mm-hmm. gain some traction, yeah. but not just being a text post that is just all about you yeah. and what you sell. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle of all that, it's just a bit where you might explain something about how you approach this particular aspect of what you do or whatever it might be but people buy into that more because they, they buy into the personality. No you're right you're, you're exactly right I, I won't embarrass the the, the, the person because I know he's quite a kind of private person but we had we had a guest on the podcast and once we put the clips out of the podcast I, I had loads of messages come through and be like I didn't realise how funny this guy was. <laughs> I didn't realise, like, this guy's like, absolutely my sense of humour. Why did you pass those messages on to yeah. me when you got <laughs> <laughs> You petrified the shit out of me. <laughs> what? No, but, like, the, and the, but that was where the kind of the medium of sort of the reason yeah. our podcast does as well as it does is because, and you, you've all been on it, and we always say the same thing. Don't plug your shit. We will, we will plug your shit. Yeah, will do right? That. What they want to see is who's behind that LinkedIn profile. Who yeah. are the people? And what have I got in common with these people? Yeah, that's always and, the podcast you want to listen to, though, because I listen absolutely. to quite a few different podcasts, and they interview people or whatever. And you just want to hear about their lives and funny stories and yeah. stuff they've been doing and stuff. And yeah, they probably mention their book or whatever. But if the that's whole thing right, is the them talking yeah. about their yeah. book, it's like well, I can it's the eighty twenty thing, isn't it? Right? Yeah, but you're right. There are people out there who don't want to take down that 
fourth wall and be like, here's a picture of my kids, here's a picture of my wife, here's yeah. my dog. Yeah. And I get that. Whereas I'm like, but then, me on a pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but then you've got to kind of figure out what is it you want because what LinkedIn absolutely isn't trying to be is an advertising board no. for you to plug your stuff. So if you don't want to play the game and don't want to tickle the algorithm in the manner that it wants to be played with, then accept the fact that you can spend two hours putting a post together. Yeah. Mm. But guess what? Only six people will see it. Yeah. And as long as and that's six it. people buy, that's, well, that's all the key right. bit, right? Isn't it? Or would you rather? rather Hundred thousand yeah. views on a post or three deals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's three deals. You right? have to think, remember yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You hit the, you hit the nail on the head, haven't you? Because. Yeah. It, it comes down to, are you looking to grow your following just because you want to be a LinkedIn influencer of some sort, or yeah. are you looking to generate business? And yeah. if if you have a post that goes out, I mean, I did, I did a bullshit poll the other day. Um, it was- Are they uh, still a thing, polls on LinkedIn? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I use them all the time. But it was, it was, it was a riddle, great. basically. It was just like, yeah, it was like, um, some, something to do with Teresa's daughter. I can't remember what the, the ins and outs of it was. But it was like, there was about four answers in there and loads of people voted. By the way, everybody got it wrong, or for, for the most part, everybody got it wrong. Did you not put the right answer yeah, in the yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that, was, yeah, that was the trick. Yeah. No, so, <laughs> no I think it was like, 30, was it like 35% or something like that, that of, of people got it right? But there was like 200 people that voted. And I looked at everyone that, uh, that had voted in there, and I was like, right, potential client, potential client, mm. potential client, potential candidate. And I just went through every single one of them. I was like, that's mm. that's a BD tool just there. Yeah, yeah. Just Only for me to if you actually do it. <coughs> this is, this is it, right? So, 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 he, yeah, yeah, but this is it. So, yeah. so he was like, oh, yeah, I've had all these people kind of respond and whatever. And I was like, email them. Mm. Email them and put the subject title as, Teresa is my daughter. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, so, and, and so give the answer in the subject thing. and then be like, cheers for voting on my poll. Mm. Teresa's the daughter. I see you're in, I don't know, nuclear. Here's a nuclear project manager that I'm working with that might be of interest here. Give them a product. Yeah. Right? Because mm. the, the key, the, the, the point is that whole piece around give people value or give people something without the need for a transaction at that point in yeah. time. But do something with that. It's creating digital assets and that sort of stuff. And you see a lot of people. So, so polls are a great um, tool. So where you are, like like yourself, you're like, I don't want to really tell anybody about kind of. I'm, I'm good at what I do. I don't need to sell my personality or my personal life to kind of prompt up what I do. We use polls. That's a great tool to let people into a little bit about who you are without having to take a selfie or mm. take a so picture of your dog or, or whatever. Like, what? how can I help you like what thing can I yeah. help you with do you want to join my free group do you want my free CV pack do you want this do you want that or an do you ice cream pay for help or, yeah and I always <laughs> yeah. put a fun one we'll on the do end do a little stupid one for to, to filter because out the, the then those yeah. everyone will vote because even yeah. the people that aren't interested in those things will vote for the ice yeah. cream so it gets more traction on the poll yeah. whereas if it's all just business stuff uh, and that's it yeah so, so do you think and then you can DM all those people and be like oh here's your free stuff how's it going yeah do you think novelty marketing works then do you know like the seasonal marketing the Halloween stuff the Christmas stuff and all the, the Black Friday stuff all of those sort of things do you think that that I think I think the problem is death of Black Friday. Yeah, but none of none of them stand out because everyone's doing yeah. that. This is the, that's everyone's the doing yeah. International Women's Day. Everyone's yeah. doing. Yeah. So what, you, what you're yeah. saying is that mm-hmm. Christmas do it Easter post. Yeah, do exactly <laughs> the opposite of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, However, so I think you need to do it in a clever way. Post, you need to remember Kwanzaa. that LinkedIn will be pushing. Christmas stories that are popular and, yeah. and mm-hmm. hashtag International Women's Day and whatever. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, because I get what you're saying, mm. you don't want to follow the crowd because that's boring. But I think he's to often f- still following a trend of some kind is sensible. Yeah, no, yeah, too we'll right, pushed, too right. But you've got but to think about to kind fun, of the metrics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Va- like way too many boring. marketing teams focus on the vanity metrics. Yeah. And therefore, as kind of decision makers, we then look at the vanity metrics. Oh, it only got three likes or six views or what? Well, you know what? Yeah, but when I say to the content team all the time, it's not about the vanity metrics. Forget about the reposts and the likes. Open out the advanced, like the the further analytics, and how many impressions has this had? How many people have seen this? Yeah, yeah, that's post? all I care about. That's it. That's mm. the important piece, because we all scroll through some sort of social media platform. Do we like everything we see? Not really. No. Have we seen it? Absolutely, we have. Right. And, and it's, it's understanding how we interact and behave as consumers uh, it, when we are in the consumer mindset and then kind of relaying that into the, now I'm trying to sell my stuff. So if I was buying my stuff, how would I, how would I interact with it so and would how would I say, buy it? Would you not say the impressions is the vanity metrics then versus the likes? Because with the likes, you've actually got something there to call to action, haven't you? And with the reposts and with the comments and stuff, there's, there's 
potential deals there that I could that I could go. Yeah, get. no, you're right. Yeah, on an impression, a, if I get a thousand impressions and one like, mm-hmm. I can't do anything with those impressions. I don't know who. No, they no, are. no, no. Yeah, you're you're, you're absolutely you've right. Had reach though, you know you've had reach. You know, for an impression, Tiger someone could potentially though. No, 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 no. You, you're absolutely right in terms yeah, of. Yeah, but that's that's the different, that, and, and that's the the kind of the salesperson mentality of right. You know, I can't sell to those who I can't see, right? Mm. And you and you're right. However, the mo- majority of those likes will be from people in your direct network who you either have already sold to, already pitched to, have already bought, possibly, or yeah. have rejected, uh, yeah. but like you, right? The impressions piece. Yes, you can't see them. But that's how you know to carry on doing it, and that's the bit. That's the consistency, the, yeah. the, the consistency the piece where it falls off. So you'll spend two hours putting a post yeah. together, for yeah. example. You put it out there, nobody's seen it, or you're like, oh, I only got two likes. What a waste of time. Expand out the metrics. Hang on, a thousand people saw this. Yeah. That two hours was probably worth it. Was worth you it. could probably trim that down to term. twenty minutes using AI. But <laughs> yes. that's a different conversation, <laughs> right? And we won't go if into that. If only there but was something that would create content on a free to use site somewhere, <laughs> like rectals, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's understanding your ideal client as well and how they mm. behave. Because for me, my ideal client for like my high end, like one to one service. Are lurkers they don't like and comment on posts yeah. very often like, i think that's so the they're normally in my network well. somewhere when you said lurkers mm-hmm. i just had an image of someone hiding in a hedge <laughs> <laughs> that's cool <laughs> that homer simpson, <laughs> that homer simpson <laughs> meme yeah, of that. Well, yeah. Like yeah but no, <laughs> you, you you you're bang on L- yeah. l- l- so lurkers are often people, ignored those people aren't mm. for me like going through the people that have liked my post isn't always that helpful it can be okay. but it often isn't those because they'll just come to me when they're ready and they'll be like Oh yeah, I've been watching your content for a couple of years. Oh, really yeah. enjoy it now. I need a CV. Yeah, and I get that all the time now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Long time lurker, can't, first can't time commenter. Control, yeah. You feel like you can't control that, so it's weird, but you can because you can keep putting out good content. consistency. Yeah. Is the key though. For most of us, it's a point in time thing where they're going to need whatever it is you're, you're selling. So yeah. by just consistently putting stuff out there, whether they like, whether they interact or not, if they're registering it, if they're absorbing it, consuming mm. it, however yeah. you want to put it. It's, I mean, I do it, you know, I, it gets logged somewhere mm-hmm. where I'm like, right, I went in a year's time when I need whatever yeah. CV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I, you know, then it's there and, I, yeah. and I'll, I'll go and find you, you know, because I've seen it. But that's what branding it. is, though, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. why we send as recruiters, for example, that's why we send mail shots. You're not sending a mail shot to pick up a job. If you pick up a job off the mail, off the back of a mail shot, the likelihood is that's going to be a hard job to fill or work on because that client is going out to whoever yeah. gets in contact. Yeah. Mm. The reason you're doing it is the brand awareness piece, first of mind. If I think recruitment, I think Michael Sharma Group. Mm-hmm. If I think yeah. you know invoice financing, I immediately think Terry. You yeah. know, yeah. that's the point in, in why you exactly. do it. And, and, and eventually that pays off. Now, obviously, that's not going to pay the bills Monday to Friday, and there's the whole range of other sort of stuff that you need to be doing. Well, that but is why you need to remember to tell people what you do, though, because it's very like say, oh, it's social media, we need to be social and stuff. But you do still need to remind people, yeah. to make it clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was trying to tie in some kind of personal story with CV writing. Yeah, yeah. Like, and a call to action. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a call to action at the end. I think it really because otherwise that. people might remember you, but they might not have a clue. What For the right reasons. Yeah. 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 I think I think a really key thing when you're writing on LinkedIn, for example, is to almost try to put yourself in the shoes of the person you want to be reading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that avatar of a potential client, what will they, using your word, consume? What, mm-hmm. what will actually draw their attention? Yeah. So don't speak... You obviously want to speak in your own voice, right? But you, you wouldn't even be but speak to them. Voice. Yeah, yeah. To that person. So I did a series of um, I did a series of open Sorry. letters on LinkedIn, right? So it was you know, dear talent yeah, acquisition yeah, investment yeah, yeah, bank yeah. or dear Ford, or dear scumbag, you know, and and that <laughs> the, that little opening line, the dear whoever, was just enough. And I and when I stopped doing it, I was getting messages from people on LinkedIn going. Hey, when are you going to restart doing them again? Because I miss, you know, I miss seeing them, and they became almost like a recurring series. Yeah, you know, yeah. And yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that really because it spoke to, you know, what recruiters sometimes will badmouth the client on on LinkedIn, right? But most recruiters will go right. I can't badmouth the client yeah. on LinkedIn yeah. because all that's going to happen is every other potential client of mine is going to go, oh, you yeah. badmouth people yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah, right, I better no, no, deal no, with no, you no. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas my job 
is to go after end clients on behalf of recruiters and mm. give them a bloody kick in. Yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. So yeah. for me, I get to say the things that recruiters would love I to wish say. Wish they could say. Yeah. 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 And when yeah. a recruiter reads it, they're like, oh my God, this guy's great. And yeah. when an opponent reads it, it, they go, oh my fuck, <laughs> this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, oh, there's, there's yeah. no loss yeah. to be there. You know? yeah. no, no, so, so, so that, yeah, trying to find a standout in that way, I think is really important. It's, it, what, what, what you th- the ideology behind that is personas so within the the kind of the marketing and the tech world they call it personas Mm. right where most people get their marketing wrong is they try and talk to their entire audience at the same time are you a small business medium business and an enterprise (laughs) because i've got a solution for you and it's like well no 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 break that down into personas (laughs) but really go granular with it right look at your last 10 customers Mm. look at like what what's common about these guys these the you know uh, uh, and in the tech world, they'll even go as far as kind of naming them, right? So mm-hmm. here is a Henry. Henry has a three-bedroom house that's usually detached or semi in a nice area. He has a nice car, but it's on finance and 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 on fire. Yeah, and, yeah, and on <laughs> fire. Nice yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's broken. Yeah, but like, <laughs> like they will they will build out the persona down to granular detail, yeah. so that they can sell to Henry because they know that whilst Henry is fictitious. There are a million of those. There are a million of of Henry's and our solution, it's not here's the product we sell, it's here's the problem we solve. So if we can sell the problem we solve to Henry, Mm -hmm. well, a million other Henry's will see that piece of content and go, that's me. Yeah. I am Henry. Well, and, and yeah. No, but there are. Yeah. But but if you think about the deal with it on an even bigger basis, so there's mm-hmm. there's a number of, I'm going to get this wrong, but there's a number of clothes brands which are basically the same company. Yeah. Yeah. But they have three different brand yes. identities. Yeah. yeah. One is high end. Yeah. 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 One is middle of the road, and the other is the cheap and cheerful. But it's all coming out of the same factories. Yeah. 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 It's all, and it's yeah. just about brand position. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Can go into and people don't care. People, because people don't look into that, right? Yeah. So if you're a, you know, if you're providing a, procurement service for example and if you can drill down okay here's the different type of personas that I provide a service to then it's so much easier and volume wise because all you hear is you need to push out content one bit of content a week is not enough one bit of content a day is not enough Mm -hmm. if you can then go right okay now I've got a content strategy I've identified five personas that we can supply a product or service to and now I've got a content strategy that I can put together for five different people now that might be three different things a dear scumbag a letter, a fun, funny post or whatever, and a poll. Mm. Per five, there's 15 bits of content that I can now spread out throughout the work week onto my social network, because that's what LinkedIn is, full of my customer base, because that's what LinkedIn is, Mm -hmm. and you're going to start seeing a quicker return on those vanity metrics of okay, hang on, this is reaching the right audience now because those lurkers are now starting to like the post, the inbound inquiries are now starting to come in, and people are actually understanding what is it you do, mm. rather than, I've heard of you, but aren't you that girl that like licks ice cream and is on, like, you, do you know what I mean? Like, or, like the, it, it's sort of like so the wrong brand, so it's, like the, <laughs> it's like the wrong brand, um, kind of the backdoor Barry thing. Your product and your your proposition, your business does a lot more than just sorting out backdoor fees, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. And that's a challenge we have. I was telling you before. before that's it. That's earlier, it. We we had a client because I'm really client where we were talking about a case, and I was explaining a bit of law to them, and they said, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, I I know this because our debt recovery lawyer." And I went, "Pardon, sorry, you what?" <laughs> and they went, "Yeah, our debt recovery lawyer." I was like. Sorry, that's but me. That's, that's, yeah. that's, like, that's like your wife, that's like your wife <laughs> saying, oh, my, 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 my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 you're, you're a disputes lawyer. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's the same thing, mate. They've got money in their pocket. You want it, I go get it. It's not whether it's a dispute or a debt. It's the same thing, right? And even at that level where it's, an interest, <coughs> let alone the market at large, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where everyone just knows me within the firm, right? There's there's, there's 10 of us, right? But everyone knows me because I'm the one out and about, right? Mm-hmm. And because I mostly do fee disputes and make yeah. noise, that, but that, that's where you know we've got an employment team and a commercial team and all this other stuff because we don't vocalise that enough. Mm-hmm. But know? Barry, your, your branding's working though. It is working because everybody knows yeah. you what we are, you know, in, in, in the recruitment game, that's yes. what you're known for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, but my point is, this well, five, so your this branding five, is working. No, no, but there's five fingers yeah. on this hand. Yeah. All you know about is my thumb. Yeah. You don't know about these other four that exist because he guess what? Be They're not the being talked about. You don't pay the bills, you won't have them. You won't have them. Fucking snap it off. No, but like, that, and that's the point, isn't it? It's, it's 
But the do persona, I need to know what the, the other four are? Right? <coughs> no. Yeah. If I've got a problem. No, but they do different things. No, no, but that's so that's they do employment law and they do commercial law and they do, and they do all this wonderful stuff and people won't. I, I get people come to me and go, oh Barry, do you know any employment lawyers? Because we've got. <laughs> Well, yeah, we've got a team with them here. No, but yeah, is that okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that not for you to... don't phone me because they don't know Yeah, do is that not for you to educate your existing client base, though? 100%. Yeah, because yeah, that's the gap, isn't it? It's yeah, the education piece. If, if, you, if you've got a, an existing client that you're working with on disputes, really, at some point, you should have probably put in there that, oh, by the way, we do, we do the... A, B, C, D, and E. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think if we're talking about kind of market outreach... To get people to phone in in the first place and get those, that golden goose that is inbound leads, right? To get that in the first place, you've got to you've got to kind of bring that in through whatever the the attraction piece is, be it disputes, mm-hmm. invoice financing, or, or kind of whatever, right? Yeah. But then mm-hmm. after that, you can then sell the basis of okay, look, we've done your terms and conditions, or we've done your your dispute. Let's have a look at your terms and conditions. Why don't we Why don't we yeah. read through that at the same time? Oh, actually, do you know what? If you want, we could do some debt recovery stuff mm-hmm. because I think. That that's kind of where you and I have this thing of like the sales and marketing piece needs to really sing together, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Because it Definitely. just it, it's yeah. so. I, I just think that the sales and marketing models the way they are at the moment are just so antiquated because th- marketing is 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 there to bring people to your business, get your brand recognised. It's to it's it's there to make the cold call way way warmer, right? If I if I call up, you called me and said, "Oh, Sean, it's Barry from Reclaw, right? Had we never met before, I'd I'd know exactly who you are." Because of marketing, if the, if that piece hadn't been done and you called me like, hey, it's Barry from Reclaw, I'm like, yeah, I might just mate, and just, that, that that's how it goes, right? Mm. And I think that's where salespeople need to be way more educated in terms of the marketing and what it can do. But I also think that the marketing people need to be way more educated in terms of what salespeople do as well yeah. and how they can support. What the salespeople need, yeah, that's, that's the you, difference. Yeah. Could you imagine doing recruitment if you were regulated like us? We're not allowed to make outbound like. <coughs> cold cold yeah. All you can do is jump and shout, right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah, it. That's yeah, all you're yeah. allowed to do. Yeah. yeah, we're just not allowed to do it. The recruitment yeah. industry would collapse if that was the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it would, wouldn't it? It would just fold like a deck of cards. Just I mean, be... Imagine how efficient other businesses would be because they wouldn't have any phone calls to handle. Just going to jump on teams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, <coughs> right we're, we're, we're coming up to wrapping up time. I think that's. that's do some fun stuff. Yeah, let's do some oh. Christmassy stuff. Right, so do we want to do New Year's resolutions or favourite Christmas movie or song? Well, well I haven't thought of a resolution yet. You yeah, haven't yet? No? Or both. Or both. Or My both. New Year's resolution is to think of a New Year's resolution sooner. <laughs> 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 Not leave it till too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who wants to kick us off? Should we go this way around then? Um, well, well I think first, Christmas movie. Oh. Christmas movie. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Or not? I was going to say, yes. if, if we get the whole way around here and nobody said Die Hard yet, I'm going to stop. Walk out. Do we just want to clarify? Do we class it as a yes. Christmas well, spark debate? I do a poll Can someone explain this to me then? So why is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Because it's in in like that Christmas. Yeah, it's that Christmas. It's at Christmas, isn't it? Set yeah. Christmas. It's set at Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yeah. And there's Christmas trees also, yeah. It's yeah. snowing outside. So, same reasons as to why Home Alone is a Christmas movie, then? Yeah. Yeah. I want to know what Kevin's <laughs> yeah. dad yeah, does that's for a good, That's actually a really good suggestion. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. that's yeah. my two. Don't <laughs> and still smiling with that many children. Next <laughs> 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 question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sorry, then. Sorry, right. Um, favourite Christmas bit. Well, Arthur Christmas is is our favourite. Arthur Christmas. That's very good. What? Really? <laughs> but um, New Year's resolution is to stick to last year's New Year's resolution. I'm meant to be a size eight by now. It's just <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's not pronouncing. <laughs> oh yes, yes. You need to speak to uh, yeah. yeah, Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was gonna. No, no. I was like, no. It's weird. Stop saying it. Stop that saying it. That was, yeah. <laughs> this is it. This keeps happening. I don't have a favourite Christmas movie, but I do have a favourite <laughs> film. Go on. Then. Okay. The Green Mile. Uh, yeah, film. that's yeah. my original film. film. Uh, Your brother was really he good. Was good money. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him in that. <laughs> Stereotyping all. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 so only you could get away with that. Oh, only you get away with that. Yeah, and yeah, New can. Year's resolution: <laughs> take more holidays. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. What's a good one? Book them yeah. and just do it. Take more holidays. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'm, yeah, uh, okay. I'm not long from Dubai. I've never nice. ever been. Yeah. Get yourself yeah, out here. Yeah. Dubai. I've never been before. Brilliant. Really to me. But I'm going to do my holidays next year. That's it. First. Nice. Bit of a cop out on the Christmas film though. No, because I'm not <laughs> really into the films at Christmas. Cause I'm always out. But favourite film, Green Mile. Love mm. it. 
watch, watch, that. watch it at Christmas. Yeah, there you, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> it comes at <to> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I exclusively watch it during Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favourite Christmas film would be Home Alone. Okay. Uh, Which kids, one? One. The okay. original. Okay. Every original. time. Yeah. yeah, we listen to the playlist in the mornings and stuff and getting them ready and that as well. That's good. Um, resolution is to carry on stopping to smile the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a good one. Otherwise, what that doesn't make sense. That carry on stopping. Continue to stop. Yeah. 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 No, because it's very easy to kind of like get caught up in the whole. Oh no, it no, no, is, no, no, no. Is, I better is. carry on. No, no, just three more months. Oh, I'll just do this. I'll just do this. Mm. No. The thing with kids is that the days are long, but the years are short, mm. and it's mm. oh, so. Can we go back to Doctor Phil? Do we? Great. 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 Do you know my my morning? Do you know that opening scene in Home Alone where like it's chaos and they've missed their flight and all yeah. that? That's my house every <laughs> morning. <laughs> every <laughs> morning. Every 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 morning. I'll put that on on, on Spotify because it actually speeds the girls up. They're like, uh, <laughs> "We gotta get ready." <laughs> it's literally like get the kids Same. up, re- re- dress for school, all that sort of stuff. Like my daughter, she'll just like casually just be eating. Like she eats cereal with no milk now for some reason, so she'll just okay. sit there just eating cereal, just like one at a time, just throwing. Like, come on, Same Penny, please. Same. That'll take a while. Yeah, yeah. Like just eating a bowl. We've yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not told you is that we to be. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's <laughs> gonna have some milk. No! Brilliant. So, it's power in power hour. <laughs> you get milk when you booked it into the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that's literally my house Closes. every morning, and it's just it's absolute chaos until the kids are finally at school, and I'm like. <sighs> Now I go to work. Yeah. <laughs> now I can go relax at work. <laughs> um, right, my favourite Christmas movie is uh, Jingle All the Way. I've not seen that. Oh, what? Really? What? That's a good one. That's a really good one. I, I, yeah. Well, I'll add that to the list. Yeah. Big Arnie dressed as a superhero. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Put the cookie so down. It's, it's quintessential nineties, yeah. like yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a great Christmas movie. <laughs> um, or the Grinch, obviously. Which one though? Benedict one is Cumber- more than one Grinch film. Yeah, one? there's a few. There's the Grinch yeah. Stole Christmas, which is Jim uh, Jim Carrey, yeah. which was good. And then the Benedict Cumberbatch one's I really funny that. as well. That was really yeah. good. That was a cartoon That's one. That's my favourite. I never really got the whole Grinch thing. <laughs> you did it. He's one of the green mile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, New Year's resolution. I think. Uh, I think I'm with you, Chester. I think. I think maybe take a bit more time off. Mm. Yeah, go go and do more stuff. Even if it's not just jumping on a plane, but actually just going out just. Spending more time at home. Senior citizens route card over here, mate. No. Did you pick it off? <laughs> <laughs> Me own. Third off rail travel. Oh Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like all the movies mentioned, by the way, including Green Mile. Um, but probably to really get in the Christmas spirit, the original, like the oldest, A Christmas Carol. Yeah. Oh, quality. Yeah, 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 yeah. The original no. <laughs> quality. Yeah. 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 Jim Carrey did that as well. Did he actually? Yeah. He did do he one of those, didn't he? He did a cartoon version of it. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, haven't, I haven't really, until now, I haven't really started thinking about a New Year's resolution, but it'll boringly probably be re- related to you know diet, eating healthier, yeah, health exercise, something like that, like every year. A diet's not just for New Year's for life. I'd be forgotten about by the end of January. Go on then, that's it. Um. <laughs> He's <laughs> terrible, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> Be- Becky. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you listening, she yeah, sent the middle yeah. finger up at it. My favourite Christmas film is Scrooge. Okay. Scrooge, Scrooge. Bill yes, Bill Murray. Oh. Really? What was yeah. that? I do like Bill Murray. What, what you, have you seen it? Scrooge. 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 Got yeah. Bill Murray, yeah, it's very good. So that's, yeah, it's a classic. Me and my brother are obsessed with that. I have to watch every year. Um, and New Year's resolutions I don't do because um, the most successful and dedicated, committed people start things in November and December, <laughs> not January. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, it's people, you start something in January, you're almost destined to fail. That's the, the statistically like proven, mm. so Fair point. don't even bother. If you're going to do like a diet or fitness thing, start now. How very judgy of you. Don't judge, <laughs> don't judgy, ju- don't judge us January gym goers. <laughs> 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 to be fair, you can't get in the gym in January, can you? Judging? It's elbow room Judge only. Well, if, the, if Kia was a word, you got yeah. one back. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got one back. Yeah. Kia's. 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 Kia's.
I th- I'm pretty sure none of you chose Die Hard just because I threatened to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you made a thing about it. You made a thing about it. This is the way you go, it's Elf. <laughs> That's my top two. That's a good two, one. Die Hard. Yeah, but I think, I think, I'll let you have Die Hard. But I think it's <laughs> Die Hard, but Die Hard speaks to that genre, like you were saying, the, the quintessential 90s yeah. film. Yeah. 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 You know, um, yeah, which we all of those basically make it Christmas. You know, the ability yeah. to sit down, yeah. probably not with babies, but with, uh, <laughs> with something anyway, and just mm. sit down and watch film after film with the kids. Yeah. Vodka Red Bull with three shots of Red Bull. No, Vodka Coke well, with Coke three, with three shots of Coke. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm going to be. I'm going to take you back to work for um, for New Year's resolution, mm. um, and it's leading from the back a bit more. Okay. So back door barrier, obviously. Oh yeah, <laughs> the lead from the back a bit more. So so it's something I've started to do a bit more this year, but coaching and supporting mm. the people in the team so mm. that they develop and be- become the solution makers within the firm rather than me leading from more from the front where I just jump in and try and fix all the problems. Mm. I think it's, yeah, it's a work-based one, but I think it will help develop the team even more than they already and are. Ultimately, it'll free up some of your time anyway, won't it, personally? Yeah. Because if you're, if you're not having to do the do as much, then yeah. naturally mm. you get more time, don't you? Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Good, huh? Christmas songs? Have we got time for Christmas songs? Oh, Nathan, sure. have we got time for Christmas songs or not? <laughs> no shaking his head like, nah, bro. Just half an hour, then you're done already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, <laughs> I guess we're done then, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And on that bombshell. <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas, everyone. We did have the Grinch in. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Nathan keeps us very scheduled and very kind of uh, efficient. Yeah. yeah. You thank you guys, that. really yeah. enjoyed no, that. Thank, thank you guys you. for coming Thanks on. Everyone. Guys. Have a good one. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, like, and Merry you. Christmas to all our yeah, listeners and, uh, yeah, and viewers. Yeah. It goes out yeah. on the 20th, doesn't it? Yeah. Merry Christmas Christ in five Christ. days, make sure you start rapping. We're <laughs> 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 really buying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Payday coming up soon. No, thank you guys for uh, for tuning in for another episode of Rec Talks Roundtable. We'll see you next time. As will you. I'm sure you'll be here. Probably, yeah. Moving in. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, we're just gonna have like no, record. Gonna, like, yeah, she, she's gonna like kind of do the roundtable, and we'll be sat behind the camera. Like.